Marc Marquez has played down expectations of extending his Coda victory tally to eight with a debut Ducati victory in Sunday's America's MotoGP. Marquez missed last year's event due to injury, but was unbeaten at Coda from 2013 to 2018, added a seventh win in 2021, then rode from last to sixth after a start line glitch in 2022. Having now left Repsol Honda for Grazini Ducati, the six-time MotoGP champion took his first sprint podium on a Desma Setasai last time in Portimo. However, he and Francesco Bagnaia then clashed over fifth place in the Grand Prix, leaving both on the ground and out of the points. Marquez stressed that even without the incident there were three or four riders faster than me and that he'd sign for a podium on Sunday. We arrive in a good racetrack for my riding style. Obviously, in the past, we achieved many good results, but right now, as we saw in Portimo, there are three or four riders faster than me, Marquez said. So let's see if I can be a bit closer. If today, Thursday, you said, you will achieve your first, Ducati, podium, I will sign. I mean before a victory, we must arrive at the podium. So step by step. Nonetheless, Qatar and Portimo were circuits where Marquez has never personally excelled, while he was untouchable at Cota for many years. On the other hand, Ducati's only Cota victory to date was by Ania Bastianini in 2022 when the Italian, now Bagnaia's factory Ducati teammate, was riding for Grazzini. Of course, they, Ducati and Honda, are completely different concepts of bike, Marquez said. The Honda was super strong in stop-and-go corners. As, for example, Alex Rin showed last year here and as me and Joan Mir showed in India more or less. Let's see how the Ducati is working here. I know that it will be different, but my target is to try to flow on this track. It's a race track that I like. So we will try to enjoy it and then we will see. The main reason I've been so successful here is that it's anti-clockwise and you have more left corners than right. This is the biggest difference. And also I like stop-and-go corners. Apart from that, I had one of the best memories of my career here, when I achieved my first victory in MotoGP, in the second race. It will be difficult to achieve victory, this weekend, because, as I say, first of all, we must arrive at a better result in a Sunday race, because at the moment we are not even able to fight for the podium. We're in the top five, but still the podium didn't arrive yet. On the other hand, Jorge Martin has made no secret of his ambition in MotoGP which is to join a factory team whether that's at Ducati or another manufacturer. That appears to be most likely at Ducati, especially after Fabio Quartararo signed a new two-year deal with Yamaha last week, a brand that had previously been linked to Martin had it lost hold of the 2021 world champion. But Martin, who was asked about rumors suggesting Promac could switch to M1 machinery, clarified his position on where he would like to be in 2025. Martin said, well, at the moment I am more attached to Ducati than with Pramac. It has been like this for all my MotoGP career. Everybody knows what my priority is. Let's wait because it is still early but I hope to move to a factory team. Even if Pramac changes, I think, I won't stay here. <laughs> While the likes of Francesco Bagnaia, Brad Binder and Marc Marquez have shown similar outright speed in race trim as Jorge Martin, the series leader has been more consistent than his rivals. Martin, winner of the Portuguese MotoGP after finishing third in the sprint at Portimo, has an 18-point lead over Binder heading into this weekend's round three of the 2024 season. But despite his sizzling form, it won't be a foregone conclusion that Martin steps foot on the podium this weekend as the Promac Ducati rider last tasted podium success at Cota in 2018, race was not staged in 2020 or 2021, when he won in Moto3. Fully fit unlike this time last year heading to Cota, Martin is hopeful of being one of the best. I'm really happy about the start of the season so far. We are doing a great job. I think our target is to be better than the years before. Not only here but I struggled quite a lot last season at this track. The main target is to be better every year. Let's see. It will be a big challenge because there are a lot of strong rivals for this weekend. I'm confident and we are doing a good job. I feel in a good physical condition which is really important here. Last season I had some fever and with the antibiotics I was struggling quite a lot. I hope to be one of the best. Fabio Quartararo has spoken about Aprilia's interest in him. Quartararo reportedly rejected a 4 million euros per year offer from Aprilia to pen a new deal with Yamaha, worth three times the amount.
Now the highest paid rider in MotoGP, he explained at the MotoGP Grand Prix of the Americas why he chose to stick with his underperforming team. I have spoken with all the brands, Quartarero told DAZN. Aprilia was one of the brands that I liked, because it is different. There are not so many riders on the same bike. But in the end we have had all the papers of all the brands on the table and the project I really liked was Yamaha in the future. In Portugal we have had a fairly long discussion with the management of Yamaha and the engineers to see in more detail the entire project between now and the end of the year, 2025 and 2026. We have seen very interesting things, things that I cannot tell yet. Really seeing Yamaha's interest in me has been one of the reasons why I decided to be in the team. It has more to do with structure, technical things, people. Yamaha is investing a lot to develop the motorcycle. It already started in January 2024. The arrival of engineers with experience in other brands has seen that very important things were missing for the capacity of the motorcycle and Yamaha is investing to do everything very quickly and in the best way. Things are coming for this year and many more for the future. Massimo Bartolini was later name-checked as crucial. The ex-Ducati engineer has joined Yamaha to be their technical director. Quartarero's Yamaha still lags behind the Aprilias which he rejected. In Texas this weekend, he and teammate Alex Rins can again display their bike's development on the track. To announce you. But Quartarero's decision to stay with Yamaha was ultimately a long-term, and a lucrative, choice. The knock-on effect for Aprilia's bid to establish themselves as Ducati's top challengers is to decide whether to stick with their experienced duo of Alix Aspargaro and Maverick Vinales for next year. Alix Aspargaro says he was told by Aprilia that they never made an offer to Fabio Quartarero. Quartarero's decision to sign a new deal to stay at Yamaha for two more years is a major part of the 2025 rider market. His new deal with Yamaha reportedly makes him the top-earning MotoGP rider on 12 million euros per year. Aprilia supposedly offered him a contract worth 4 million euros per year which he knocked back. Aprilia rider Espargaro was quoted by GP1, Fabio is one of the best riders, if not the best young rider, in terms of talent. It is normal that Aprilia talked to him, but they told me that they never made him an offer. We will never know if that is true, only Fabio and Aprilia know but I can totally understand because he is a young writer. We Aprilia writers are expiring our contracts this year, and so was he. Aprilia CEO Massimo Rivola's job was to talk to everyone.